Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a quick single card yes or no tarot reading. Um, so go ahead and pick your card. It's just numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And the timestamps to each card are down below in the description box. Uh, let's get right into it. Okay, card number one, Nine of Pentacles. Really nice card to get. This is definitely a yes. Um, this is more particularly a card of bringing in your own personal, like, luxury frequencies, uh, I want to say. Uh, in fact, I would almost say if you're thinking of should you be sharing, like, your abundance and your wealth with other people, I would almost say no for that. Because this card to me is, this is not the Ten of Pentacles. This is the Nine of Pentacles where she is here in her garden, in her robe, with all of her pentacles stacked up. Uh, it's a beautiful day for her to be watering her own garden, so to speak. So anything pertaining to looking after yourself, caring for your own needs, you know, serving yourself, not in like, you know, that evil kind of, you know, service to self uh, way that people worry about being. This is so that you are serving yourself and looking after your own needs so that when the time comes for you to, you know, evolve into the Ten of Pentacles, then you can share what you've earned. But I would say... Uh, like if you happen to be asking, uh, <laughs> you know, should I give somebody a thousand dollars or even a hundred dollars or even five bucks, right? Do they deserve that money? Will they make good use of it? I would almost say no, or at least not yet uh, for that particular thing. But for anything else, especially anything just concerning your own personal priorities, this is a yes. Okay, card number two. Nine of Swords. This one comes up in all of my yes or no readings, unfortunately. Um, this is, this is your no. This is like, this is nothing but a no. Um, all I can say about it, you know, to find the silver lining here is that whatever has been causing you this nightmare, this anxiety, this anguish, it's actually, you know, you're past, you're through the worst of it. You're like, you're through the woods. Um, you might, you're still definitely feeling it, but as you can see, she's not asleep. She's not still in the nightmare. She's woken up for the nightmare. She's still traumatized and scared from the nightmare and she might not sleep the rest of the night. And of course the rest of her day is going to be ruined from, you know, exhaustion, uh, and this horrible, horrible feeling. Um, but you know, if you got this card, your no, take your no <laughs> for whatever you asked about, but remember that, you know, you will move on from this and the worst is over. Um, and you know, after the nine of pentacles comes the obviously, or the nine of swords, sorry, with two nines in a row. <laughs> uh, after this comes the 10 of swords, which is the final death, the final end of whatever situation or problem you're facing. So once you get through that, then you're going to be, you know, going on into your, your, your new world. <laughs> so hang in there, guys. Uh, you know, it's just a little bit farther and this is all going to clear up, but for pile two, you were definitely no. Okay, card number three. Three of Pentacles. This is a yes. This is a good card for working working in groups and starting any kind of new new endeavors. Um, anything about going back to school, starting a new job, starting a new project, even just like cooking dinner as a family or having your friends over, <laughs> um, you know, to make fondue or something. <laughs> this is this is a good card for uh, collaborations, really. Any kind of collaborations, particularly anything that will manifest with a physical product, you know, even if you just eat that pro product. <laughs> um, I actually feel like this is a pretty, pretty low-key card uh, because I feel like whatever it is that you, you're asking about, it's sort of uh, in the beginning phases. Maybe you got it underway, you've done some planning, and here you're ready to manifest, but it's going to take... Um, more than just, you know, your own willpower, you're going to need a little bit of planning, a little bit of, uh, you know, elbow grease, and you might, you might even have to like learn new skills in order to do this, or, you know, recruit other people. You can, you can do it all yourself if you can do it all, but you don't have to do it all yourself because you can always enlist the help of people who have a complementary skill sets to yourself. So overall, that's a yes. Um, And okay, card four. Two of cups. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, I think this is almost unequivoc unequivocally a yes for everybody under any circumstances. This is one of my favorite cards. It's sort of like the lover's light, right? Um, this doesn't have to 
obviously we have these, you know, romantic uh, undertones here of, you know, this is almost like almost like a wedding situation. It's these card of these lovers coming together, um, entwining their life forces is one and their goals and their dreams and their hearts and their desires, all of that. But this is always, always to me also, you know, like your internal, your internal braiding, braiding together uh, inner strands of different aspects of yourself. So if you ask about something to do with, uh, you know, your spiritual journey, you know, your consciousness, uh, <laughs> when are you going to manifest your magical abilities, your psychic abilities, you know, you like you remember having from other lives. This is all speaking really well to that as well. This isn't just speaking positively for romance. It's speaking to anything to do with your own uh, internal evolution and anything you might want to manifest that will eventually stem from your inner alignment. This is a yes. And it's a really uh, auspicious card for any kind of intertwining you feel you might need to do. Okay, card number five, Seven of Swords. This is a no, but I don't take actually take this card to be as serious as most people do. <laughs> like, uh, you know, you see the Seven of Swords and it's like, oh, this this evil guy, he's full of deceit and he's trying to trick people and da da da. Really, I feel like this guy, he's not so much tricking other people, he's, he's like, he's fooling himself. So you might be fooling yourself here. <laughs> like, um, whatever you're asking about, take a look at it and see if you're really, really being honest with yourself. You might need to, you know, face some shadows here, or face some unpleasant truths about yourself or, you know, even somebody else, if it's a situation about somebody else. What aren't you seeing? What aren't you seeing accurately? Because this guy clearly thinks he's getting away with something, but like, what is he really getting away with? He's holding these swords. This is what always gets me. He's holding these swords by the blades. And I don't think you can carry, you know, five swords by the blades uh, without cutting yourself, no matter how carefully you're holding on to like, you know, the flat parts. <laughs> um, and it, this is like after a battle and he's picking up all these fallen swords. I don't know if any of these are going to be missed. He seems to think he's really getting away with something, but I don't think he is. I think he needs to like question what the hell he's actually even going to do with these swords once he, once he runs away with them. So you guys might need to do a little bit of uh, introspection and be brutally honest with yourselves. Um, cause I think whatever you're asking about is a no, not so much because of external factors or anything really stopping you but whatever is going on you're not seeing the situation clearly you're not seeing your own thoughts and or feelings clearly and something just feels cattywampus about this and you need to get it cleared up okay what are we at card number six ace of cups I, I like when this card pops up, I can actually like almost like hear it singing. Like <laughs> it makes me, it makes me so happy. I, I, I like, you know, your cup runneth over. You've got, you've got good mojo coming guys. This is a yes. Absolutely. Like, you know, and the peasants rejoiced. <laughs> like, uh, I honestly don't even know if I'm going to say much about this. It's the ace of cups, you know, <sighs> wonderful wonderful fulfillment but also you know it's emotional fulfillment but fulfillment while also being new that's the thing about the that always gets me about the aces right like when i was a kid uh my mom and her friends always played a lot of poker and so i would sit with them sometimes and play you know they play little like games with me try to teach me how to play some of the simpler games and uh I, I always made such a big deal. I was always so curious. Like, are aces high or aces low? Because in some games they're high and some games they're low. Uh, but really, they're it's a singularity, right? They're they're, <laughs> they're they're one in the same. Like, the ace is both the higher octave and the lower octave of the same note. You know, like, it's middle C, high C, and low C, and all the other Cs all at once, right? So I guess the one thing that m might... I might be able to say here is almost like you get to decide what octave of frequency you're experiencing this on, you know, is it going to be a deep, rich, slow, sonorous, like low C, or is it going to be a more moderate middle C, you know, the center of everything, the, the notes that the whole piano revolves around, or is it going to be a more pure toned piercing high C that really, uh, really carries over long distances, but also, you know, it can be kind of hard on the ears depending on <laughs> on how well-tuned it is, right? What am I trying to say? Basically, the high notes need to be tuned really, really well, otherwise they hurt your ears. So the same thing here. I would say this is absolutely a yes, but within that yes, you get to decide uh, how this Ace of Cups energy manifests for you. 
uh, you get to, you know, you get to decide if the ace is high or if the ace is low. And low doesn't mean bad here. Just think of how, you know, lower notes in music, um, a lot of the times to me, are more beautiful, richer, and fulfilling. You know, lower means it can mean deeper, more complex with more depth. So, you know, no judgment here about what octave is best. You get to choose how you want to experience it in respect to your personal situation. All right, card number seven, the fool. The fool to me for a yes or no is it's kind of like both and neither. Uh, he's like the point of singularity that is, you know, everything and nothing. So I think what, what I can say about the fool is that you are being invited to begin something. So if you're asking, should I try this? Should I start this? Should I give this a shot? Should I jump in? The answer for that would be yes. But if you're asking for about a specific outcome, there is no answer for that. You know, the fool has no idea what is coming his way. So go ahead, make your beginning, make your start, but uh, understand that there at this time, you know, your trajectories are wide open. You have all kinds of opportunities opening up for you. And it's like an invitation to use your discernment, and navigate your own path. This can also be a sign that, you know, maybe you're not supposed to be receiving a yes or no answer right now. Maybe you're supposed to be experiencing the journey, you know, almost blindfolded, you know, it, it's like, when you're reading a book, you don't jump to the like last chapter to see how it ends before you <laughs> read the rest of the book, right? You want to watch the journey unfold. So there's, there's definitely an unfoldment happening here, whether that's, you know, that could be anything that can be spiritual, that can be in your relationships, or that can, you know, be in your career or creative projects. It can be anything, but be open to that unfoldment and go ahead and jump in, but do not be attached to any particular outcome at this time. Okay, card number eight. Uh, and we end on the Ten of Pentacles. This is a yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, like, well, these people almost look like they're like partying the town square. We have everything good going on here. I know that the Rider weight is actually kind of hard to see what's happening. Um, but you've got all your Ten Pentacles. It's almost like, this always reminds me of like confetti. Uh, <laughs> yeah, almost like a confetti of money, like a t ticker tape parade. Uh, you have these three people here and there's more people in the back and got dogs down here. It's like the whole village came out to play and everything is is awesome. And it's funny, the card number one was the Nine of Pentacles. Uh, and, uh, you know, I talked with that one about Nine of Pentacles is more about your own personal luxury and your own personal abundance and resources. The Ten of Pentacles is sharing your abundance and sharing your resources and sharing your wealth and your luxury and happiness with, it's like, you're sending that energy out from yourself. You're the center of the vortex and all around you, everyone is going to be benefiting from that. So if your question had anything to do with sharing, <laughs> sharing and caring, absolutely a yes. But the 10 of pentacles is a yes for basically anything. It is just a, a place of fulfillment and abundance. And the fact that it's pentacles to me really means that since we're here, you know, this is, this is the earth energy. Since we're here on earth, this pertains to literally anything to do with you at all, because even your spiritual pursuits, because, you know, when you're on earth, part of what we're trying to do here is ground our, the transcendent etheric astral energies, ground them into the earth, you know, in our bodies or we're here. So, you know, some people tend to think that earth energy is like almost like the opposite of uh, spirituality, you know, transcendent energies. I don't see it that way at all. Um, I really see it as bringing the two together, we want, we want to be bringing the transcendent down, down here to earth and, and really, really live it and really, really embody it. So, I mean, you might be also being called to do some of that. How can you ground your spiritual energies into your life, into the people around you more? I mean, this card, you could even be uh, being called to being step, to step up as some kind of a spiritual leader or, you know, <laughs> just as any kind of regular teacher or somebody throwing a block party and cooking for everybody, whatever it is, uh, Feel free to share the wealth with the Ten of Pentacles, always. And that's the end of this video. Please, you know, like, subscribe, and comment if this resonated with you. This is a new project for me, so I'd really like to hear from anybody who was tuning into this. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.